Sam Messman, smart guy, he says, oh, we got to talk with these guys. And Sam's been giving me little notes. And I will be honest, I kind of understand what these guys have done. Sam has warned me, this is great stuff. So you're going to see a little bit of discovery here as I, as I talk with the guys. We have Brian. We have Dragon, who coincident coincidentally owns a dragon, and Ryan. And they made a movie. And we're going to sit down. We're going to just we're going to figure out about the movie, OK? <laughs> First of all, uh, Ryan and Dragon, you guys co-directed, correct? correct? Correct. All right, what's the name of the movie? Suburban Cowboy. Suburban Cowboy, all right. And uh, I think it might be relevant. What, what kind of budget are you looking at on a movie like this? Micro budget. Micro budget, Without okay. saying, exactly. Right. It's like, oh, no. Craft services, what do you got in your pocket? That kind of thing? No. <laughs> no, there was good craft services. Good. That's the most important thing. At least feed Thanks, people, man. right? <laughs> yeah, took care of us. OK, and Dragon, your background is uh, in music, correct? Yes. Tell correct. us a little bit about that. Uh, my background is music. Uh, I've been DJing, producing music for probably 12 years. Um, I just came back from Coachella. I just played Coachella. It was, uh, it was awesome. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know. I've just been doing music for so long that I found this new passion in filmmaking, and it was like a really easy transition from music to film. And you know, I met Ryan, fell in love, not with him, with ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with film. It's a match made on the set. <laughs> uh, yeah, just now we're here. Now, in your music world, you do a lot of stuff with Logic, correct? Yes, yeah, so I've been producing music. In, in Logic for the last probably five or six years. Okay. I guess when, uh, when Apple bought Logic um, and then they turned it into, I think, version 8. Okay, I remember that. That's yep. when I jumped on board. Uh, that's when I actually thought it was logical to use. All right. Anything before that, it wasn't very logical. So we'll, get, we'll, we'll yeah. understand how that uh, sure. uh, fits into this story mm -hmm. uh, more in a bit. Now, Brian, yes. what was your job on this movie? Um, I was DIT and assistant editor. Okay. So. So as we know, you know, uh, earlier this week we spoke with Mike Matzdorf, and he was basically had, uh, he, I don't think he was the DIT, he was the assistant editor on Focus. Now, as I recall, they had a little bit more than a micro budget on that movie, <laughs> but similar problems. You have, you know, editorial has to go on, the, 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 everything has to be ingested, mm -hmm. we have to deal with all the various audio, ins, ins and outs and what's not, what not. You're doing a different budget. But you guys were able to do this because of a primarily workflow. And yeah. that, that's what this is really all about. Yep. So where did the process start? Um, how were you shooting? How many cameras? What kind of camera? So we shot everything on, uh, on the Red Dragon. Uh, we actually had two cameras. One was always set up on the handheld. And the second one was um, on the Movi. All right. So it was either handheld or Movi, the whole shoot. The whole thing. Yeah, no the tripods. No, no, tripod. no tripods. So you save money on tripods. At least. <laughs> they're they're cheap oh, to rent. A, you know you can rent those, right? <laughs> it was just it was an aesthetic a, style. It was a technical <laughs> rule that we wanted to have. Okay. 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 So uh, clearly, I'm kidding. So we shot in two cameras. The whole thing was shot in 6K. Mm -hmm. um, we did 16 days. We shot 15.3 terabytes. So roughly averaging about a terabyte a day okay. of footage. And it's and it's six K Dragon Raw. Six K Dragon Raw. Seven to one. Seven to one compression. All right. Now, how are you bringing that stuff in? You, you, as the DIT, you're mm -hmm. dealing with a, a terabyte a day. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of media is it coming into, and where are you copying it to? Um, I had I had two drives. I was doing two drive backups on set, and then at the end of every day, Dragon would take one of the drives back, and he had a, a Pegasus R8 waiting for him back at the studio, um, and so that he would do our third backup that way. Okay. Um, and I was I was doing just a basic card structure in Finder. I was kind of organizing card one, card two, or AO1, AO2 uh, as we went down the list. Now, what about the, um, are you using stuff like uh, um, Shotput Pro, or what, what were you no, using? I was, I just was doing Finder, Finder copies. I was doing Finder copies. OK. And verifying file sizes and making sure everything works after I do the Finder copy. It's my understanding there's a fair amount of uh, uh, concern about that, uh, that in bigger budget projects, mm -hmm. maybe more than micro budget, uh, there will be um, contingencies with insurance and completion bonds that if you w were not using something that's doing the whole checksum error, that you know they won't insure you or something. But hmm. you you felt okay with the Finder? Yes. So do I. I know. I like yeah, Finder. Yeah, I just do the Finder. <laughs> I use the Finder all the time. Yeah. I've never lost a file. 
thing. Copying files. Um, all right, so that's that now. You were also using, um, you were getting notes from the set, correct? Yes, actually. How were the notes being taken? It was really cool. So um, I was working with my sound guy and my camera guy, our second AC. Second AC. Um, and they were filling out, uh, they both had, one had an, a phone, the other one had an iPad, and they were filling out a Google Sheet. And essentially, I mean, I'm sure quite a few of you have used So a, spre a spreadsheet yeah. on Google Apps. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we were pretty Google much Docs managing. I was, now, yeah. I was like the eye in the sky. I had these two different spreadsheets um, from these two guys, and you know, sound is giving me an idea of who's in each scene and what the kind of what the room is and everything. And then my actual camera guy was giving me camera notes um, and scene take, and I was able to kind of cross -ref reference those to fill in. And what kind notes. of camera notes were coming in, like? Like, um, what, what the best takes were, what was happening? Yeah, well, we weren't getting circle takes, takes for a while. I, I don't think you guys realize we could call circle takes and have that translate. We're just translate. not interested in circle and takes on set. Yeah. We we like, shoot like it all, like decide experiment. later. Yeah. Yeah. We like to watch all the footage, so. Okay. Um, I did get rejects occasionally if there was, like, a bad shot. You know, you can fill out the reject column so it shows up on in Final Cut with the red bar. Um, so and, explain, yeah. explain that, that philosophy of not <laughs> choosing on the set. I mean, you're gonna watch all the footage anyway, right? Like, um, maybe. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. A lot of times, if I see five takes of something, I'm gonna, as an editor, I'm gonna go check the last take. <laughs> Work your way up. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, we're making a movie that our and name's just, going on, and this has to be the best possible. I, mean, I try to keep my name off my work. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So, sometimes you're in the in the moment, and you think you got it, and you're like, yeah, circle and circle this, and then maybe you go back, fresh mind, you look at it. Maybe it's not the one. So we just, look, fact, at, we just actually, look at all the footage and, uh, and make a decision when we're fresh. Okay. Out of 86 scenes, there were, I think, 11 that we said, that's the one. Seven of them were not the one. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. And sometimes they'd even come to me and they'd watch three or four takes. Like, you guys would be like, hey, let's watch this, 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 this. And you're like, that's the one market. And we'd move on. And, and that was, was a cool thing. What we could do is right. Brian was there. Would shoot. He gets the card. We can watch it right there and then, mm -hmm. and say, "Yep, cool." So you are watching back on the we set. We could if we wanted oh, yeah. to. Yeah. How often did you do that? I mean, on average, it was pretty rare. Yeah, okay. Like maybe once, twice a day, max. Yeah. Now you have this information on a spreadsheet yes. that, it, where, as you said, the eye in the sky. You have two guys mm -hmm. each filling out a separate spreadsheet. One Correct. got an iPad. One got an iPhone. You're merging that together into a third sheet. Mm -hmm. How are you getting? that information in the final cut? Uh, shot notes. So I was using Shot Notes X and their template. And so I was kind of filling in that information. I did have to do, you know, it probably took about 15 minutes worth of maintenance for a day's spreadsheet. And so I kind of had to make sure everything lined up. But um, that's how I inserted my keywords and scene take information. And then I used Shot Notes to merge that into metadata. So in you, bring, you bring the camera shots in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you're doing, did you do proxies? Uh, not on set, no. Okay, so but so you bring the ca the camera footage in, you bring the spreadsheet data in. Yeah. That's all time code referenced or or take number. Uh, it's actually, how does, it's, how does okay. shot notes do this? So it's interesting. So shot notes. Um, my big concern with shot notes is it, it goes with clip clip name usually, and so I, my concern was like how do how do you write down every single clip name as you're working? Right. Um, and Sam actually showed me it's really cool. You can send your once you import the footage, you send an XML out of Final Cut, um, and you get a full list of all the clip names in order. So you have time of day, clip names in order, and then it's as simple as a copy paste into the same order of all the notes that someone else made. Right. Um, and again, that does require a little bit of kind of due diligence and making sure you, you know that everything lines up. Um, but we only had one instance where there was like a, like an extra cell that created a gap, and I ha I like went in halfway through they were mislabeled, and I had to go back and okay. clear the, the cell. Now, how did this help you creatively having all of this information? merged with the camera footage so quickly? Well, it goes back to a previous project that we did last year. We shot it all in 4K, and it went pretty smoothly, but it wasn't as organized. 4K was so 2014. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> last year. It was. So um, I kind of looked at some of the things, and I thought, well, we could do this better. And then um, I spoke to Sam, and we kind of sat down, and stuff that I knew, stuff that he knew, we sort of put it together, and he uh, just helped us kind of like bring Brian on board and make sure like every piece of information ended up in each clip. Yeah. Audio was synced. We had so a Bible built for the sound, so for the, the camera department, mm -hmm. 
So beforehand, there we got this Bible that said so this is exactly what, what they you need to, to do. do. So when we, when he was finished with the footage, creatively, we could just breathe first. Yeah. And know that everything is done. Yeah. And literally start editing day one. What you mentioned, Ryan, about having a, a show Bible, uh, the, an instruction manual, or you know, a roadmap of how we're going to do this. This is what we are going to do. You all have come to this job today with your own experience and your own ex you know, ideas, but this is what we will do. And this is really the thing that we keep, it's, it's a common theme that comes up in so many of the conversations that I have where you start to see that it's the people that plan it out before you pull the cameras out of the bags, really. You know, before you get on set, when you have your workflow down, it's ri it's going to ripple through every bit of the creative process right mm -hmm. up to the final screening. I right? mean, what we did was pretty uh, high tech, you know, doing it at six K and all that. And when I look back at how we did it, it seems very uh, very simple. Yeah. Because everybody followed the instructions. Right. And more or less, it went pretty smooth. There was some yeah. trepidation on the sound part because they never had done it that way and then the second AC um, everybody freaked out because yeah. they've never done it before and they were like how what 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 what, what do you mean because they're usually writing they're usually writing the camera report and instead he, of putting in a spreadsheet mm -hmm. yeah so he needed an iPad there and you know he had a little little cry for a minute about how <laughs> iPad, it's going to take me longer and it's like well this is your job now if you want this, this is it, it's Monday. If you want to work this on is this your show. new job. <laughs> I don't know what you were doing last we had, week. We, we had pretty uh, diligent interview sessions in terms of hiring, whether mm -hmm. it was sound or camera or whoever. Um, we saw a lot of people and went through a lot of resumes uh, because we didn't want someone that's going to show up and say, well, this is how I'm used to doing it mm -hmm. um, and wasn't going to be able to wrap their head around. It, it wasn't like we were, you know, it was not rocket science. It was like, this is a new task for you. You don't have to worry about all this other crap that you did before because now we simplified it. Yep. Yeah. And so once he kind of wrapped his head around that. And it took him a second to be like, well, no, 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 I've done like this before. And we're like, no, no, this is a new way. Right. And once they said, okay, I get it, it was fine. And yeah. then, then he, because we did not have a script suit because uh, we wanted to keep the crew as small as possible. And I just didn't see a need for it because the second AC was essentially filling those duties. So uh, we were able to uh, cut a roll completely and save money there too. Um, but he was like, oh, well, a script soup should do this. And we were like, well, now you're doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I've always thought that <clears throat> as producers start to see the benefit of what Final Cut does, that there will be pressure top down for people to start accepting this. Mm -hmm. So I want to get, I want to have Brian show us how he was doing the sync and link stuff. Is that cool? Well, yeah. yeah. So actually, really quickly, the one yep. thing Let's that really worked, the wor thing that worked great to convince him to, uh, the camera guy, to do the spreadsheet was to actually help him out the first day and do the eye in the sky a little bit more heavy. Got it. So if you guys do that, it's recommended to maybe keep an eye and do some copy and paste for them to fill in the gaps okay. uh, until they get their thing going. Hey, if you guys want to move down one chair, we can, sure. a little less shadows, and you can actually see what we're doing, too. Okay, guys. So I pretty much... I imported the footage, I drag it right over from Finder, I drag it straight to the event. Um, and just, I'm just curious, any shot notes, sync and link, do you guys use it, show of hands, yes? Just Couple a few people. people, okay. All right. This will be fun. Um, we'll so. We'll change that. Yeah. <laughs> um, from day two, I actually, so should I run through it or do you want, should I just show what I? Show me what you did. Okay. Um, I would so, do. So you have an event day two, uh, yes. which is all the footage from that day. That's correct. All okay. my footage, all my red, uh, no keywords. Well, I did card keywords, but I okay. didn't need to. Um, and you send out an XML. I'm going to do. I actually kind of already have them. Um, but I would, I would send out and generate an XML, and I'll just, I guess I'll just do another right here. Um, we can just open up the one that's already there. That's okay. okay. We cool. get it. Yeah. All right. You've so seen a demo. That's the process of right. an XML going out, if you're curious. Um, and we would do shot notes X. Um, and this is just, this was kind of how I would cross-reference. But I've got my XML, uh, day two, and you could then get a shot log from that. And I'll just, actually, I think that even, <laughs> I think I even have one of those. Um, so, you would get a shot log, and normally there would be content in there. Is there a different tab, maybe? Oh, there we go. There it is. 
Um, so this, this Excel document is the Excel version of the, of the library information, correct? Yes, okay. exactly. Um, and so in turn, here we go. Um, and I actually, I, I'd already pasted. I pasted all of this information in. Okay. But, um, you know, you where did you get ignore, that information okay. from? Um, this was from the Google Sheet that I was doing. So the Google Sheet, this was being filled out, and they were, they were pretty much just doing like A09, and they would just keep going until it turned to A10. So it would just say A09 and be blank until you'd see one that said A10. And so that was kind of my reference from camera. Whenever they switched a card, they would write a new. Yeah, so we're going to take a quick look on this. If I zoom in like this, sure. you can see, uh, I guess I can't with the, is the mouse going? There we go. Yeah. So the way the red data comes in, mm -hmm. it's card A9, or camera A9. Clip. And then, and then the last digit is the randomly weird right. generated by only a camera can understand. Exactly. So the A009 okay. and, and the, uh, the clip number is C001, 002, okay. that's all predictable. Got it's it. just right. sequential. Um, and so pretty much, I, and I, I apologize, I have the complete one, but ignore all the information. You just get the clip names. You get the links at the end um, over here get all of this information. Um, and then you really, I went from Google Sheets and I would copy and paste over scenes and I would go by card. I would do, okay, right. here's all my so, A09. So some cards. of these columns are what is sometimes referred to as like automatic metadata. It's mm -hmm. derived from the file name. Exactly, and we, we this know is how all many from the clips. Is. And then you, draw, you copy in. And I paste it, copy and paste it, all of this information. And again, this is the merging of the two worlds. That's correct. All right, um, and now that, what do you do with this? So from here, no, actually, I'll just expand really briefly, um, just to give you guys a sense. Uh, what we were doing is, these are notes. We filled them out as just notes, so they'll show up in Final Cut under the notes uh, field in, in, in the inspector. And then these guys over here are all keywords separated by commas. So each one of these is going to get separated um, as a keyword, and so we kind of you know, we were trying to figure out what's the best way. Do you have everything a keyword? Do you make your frame size a keyword? Um, and even frame size is a little redundant uh, because the information's in the camera. Um, but keywords we ended up going with, what type of shot it is, who's in it, the location, you know, interior, exterior. So the interior remote bar, that's one keyword, J, Victoria, PD, mm -hmm. MCU, two shot. Okay. Yes. So that was how we ended up organizing our keywords. It took a little bit of, you know, sometimes we had extra keywords added and sometimes I had to add some later. but. Um, from there, you would, quite simply, um, assuming I, I've got my good old shot log, which I just showed you guys, and I've got the XML, which is this guy, where is he, right there. Um, when you save it, you actually get, it's actually right here, uh, you get a day two shot notes FCP XML. And when you do that, it gives you the, op the option to import, and you just choose where you're going to import it, and we're doing it in the, the demo, the demo library. Um, and so, side note, really interesting thing is, I was using a different library than I ended up delivering to them. I delivered to them an edit library, where I separated all of the footage uh, into events labeled scene. You know, scene one, scene two, scene three, those were all the different events. Um, in my organization, as you can see, I've got my day, my day two, my day two shot notes, um, and soon we'll have my day two synced. Um, and so I, I did my organization in my own library, where I was able to get messy and have duplicate events, essentially, of you know, like that one would be. Um, and so that was shot notes. That's pretty much in about 15, 20 minutes, I would get all of my So my now twirl this down and show me my keywords. Yeah, yeah. So here's keywords and for click scenes. click on list view here. Yep. Here's my scenes, exterior rem bar, so I, I can Those grab are the any, ones we just saw. J, yep. Victoria, PD, I'm sure, is down there exactly, somewhere. Yes. There we go. Over the, when they're over the shoulder shots, I, I had those labeled, um, and so, Scene shot taken because um, because we have it all as metadata, we can use the quick rename tool in Final Cut um, to clean up, and that's hiding here uh, where you would do scene shot take angle, and you could just rename any clip based on a parameter. Um, and so, wow. because we've inserted all that metadata, we now have a really really quick easy way for for Dragon and Ryan when editing to to organize it however they need it to be because the information's in; it's already in there. Um, so going from there. Continue? Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, so from I want to see this movie. Let's get, yeah, the, let's right? get it over we're with. Gonna, we're going to edit it. Um, 
from there, we of course still need to sync the footage. And I was fortunate to have a time code, uh, have time code jam sync, which is crucial to what we were doing. But uh, we use sync and link. And sync and link is, a, again, it's a very simple XML export import scenario. Uh, but we would send out the XML from the day two shot notes. So once everything's labeled, and if you'll notice, audio is, is just the audio file. Right. Um, we send that out. And I actually have already created one again. But we would send that into. So, in, like for example, in my little world, I'm always struggling of to find the best way to sync a, a separate audio file with the camera footage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're shooting like, you know, a hundred B-roll shots and then two interviews. And it's like ah, I don't know which one of these. And I'm looking at duration, but you're actually syncing it by time code. I am. Because your time code, your audio recorderist, recordist is recording the same time code. He was doing the, a jam sync. Okay. Yes. Good. Um, and this was, of course, through the and red. that's what and Sync and Link's going to do for us. Exactly. In a split second, <laughs> making <laughs> me feel magic. stupid. Um, so we would have Sync and Link over here. I keep going to the. So the day two shot notes XML, that's the one I just created using shot notes and the one that got imported into Final Cut. I actually don't even need to export it again from Final Cut as long as it's right. You can just use the same shot notes. Um, and it goes through and it analyzes and lines up the audio clips that are in there with the video clips that are in there. And if you have multiple cameras, it can also do multicam. There's really cool things there. Um, you can do audio offset. Um, and I like to use several names for audio component names. So from here, this is actually where my camera, or my sound report comes in. Is this is where I was using, and I will. The guy who didn't sound. want to do this. Actually, it was more the camera guy that didn't want to do it. The sound guy was used to filling out a sound report. Okay. He just was like, oh, am I digitally? OK, am I phone, I guess. <laughs> so you don't want paper? Um, no, I do not want paper. I'm good without I paper. I want a All spreadsheet good. exactly like this. So his was a scene take. And this was, this was key for me to be able to cross-reference. Because if somebody did make a mistake, I could be like, OK, sound, my sound guy was pretty on it. He, wasn't, he didn't need to scramble as much. So his was reliable. But, um, you know, I've got this. This is all boom. I know for a fact he writes boom. Nothing changes. Track one is boom, um, and so I go over here and I do my renaming. Uh, track one, boom, and I work my way through here to label my audio. They're essentially going to create roles or sub roles for us in Final Cut, um, and so I'll just J. And in this instance, um, I do. I've got two people. I've got the overlap. I've got Petey uh, yeah. and Victoria and even Ricky that are all on the same one. So I actually do. I don't think Ricky had a very big part. He wasn't that important. <laughs> um, Ricky got suffocated. Four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Victoria. And oh, Ricky. Ricky does get uh, he, he comes the things back. you learn. Um, so I mean, that was like right away. I've got these labeled. And once I put this through the system, it'll actually help carry that information in. Uh, so I'm going to import automatically. And just like that, just like that, Chris. Yeah. The magical thought process. Um, and you do save XML file. We're going to save it day two XML. Place. And I choose where to import it once again. And I'm going to put it back into my days, my demo, right. my days demo library. So this is really, we're seeing like the the full implementation of what a library and the and the events allow you to do and why it's so important you know you can jump in you know i talk a lot about you know the soccer dad mode of final cut 10 you could jump in and do that but as you as you peel it back you you realize there's more and more power it's it, there's a big difference between looking for a file mm -hmm and searching for a file. When I look for it, it's my eyes scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, I'm tired. I missed it. Or I can ask the computer to help me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm searching, and I'm sorting, and I'm filtering, and I'm working 100 times faster. So, so, so now we have, show me what we have now. There we go. So now we have synced. We have our synced footage. And this is, I mean, it's pretty cool. We've got our audio. Uh, it ends up, because that was actually a rejected clip. Click on my uh, audio yes. tab over there. So we've got our components labeled. So you Which know, is what you entered in Sync and Link. Exactly. Um, and at the same time, though, they're also being uh, set as roles. So you'll see we have separate dialogue sub roles running down here. We've got the Boom, J, PD, Victoria, Ricky, and Victoria. And so you've got a quick, I mean, this is going to run all the way from here how, how back long to did logic. That took, us? that took us like 10 minutes, and, and, you, and it 
I slowed you down because I kept asking you Yeah, you slowed you me down a whole questions. bunch. You should see me when I'm, when I'm unfiltered. <laughs> OK. Um, anyways, uh, so from there, OK, so we were using RED. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with RED time code, but it does, it can go off a few frames uh, and just be warned. Uh, and so this did actually, at this point in the process, and I won't make you guys watch me do all of it, but I would go through and I'd verify sync. You know, I, it's, it's within a frame or two, but you just got to make sure the slate. Uh, oh, the this right is a, something that I just learned recently. So mm -hmm. um, I understand for mul a multitude of reasons, we're not going to play any of this, but <laughs> when you found something that was out of sync, what would you do? Oh, OK, so really cool. I would just do a right click, open in timeline. Yep. And then, this is so cool. then you can simply, you can nudge. You just use the, the period and comma keys, and you can move. So each back clip actually yeah. has almost like a little mini timeline as an editor. Exactly. Once this is all dialed in they're and They're all proper. linked together. Yeah. So we know they're like. I just, I just learned this like two weeks ago. Really? Like, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> um, so that's, oh, that's how you see. go about. Yeah. Is that a, a, a copper board or? Yep. That's, my, that's, that's the slate right there. So you can see it. Awesome. Yes. Um, and then when you get up here, what's actually really nice too about Sync and Link is it disables your, your camera, your reference audio, yeah. if you have it. Um, so it already is like, great, ignore the reference audio, here's, here's what we recorded. Um, and so from there, I, my process then was I'd verify Sync and I would have a, and I'll just create an, a new library just, just for the sake of the demo. Um, edit, demo. Um, so, from there, once I've verified sync, I've, ver I've made sure my components are properly labeled, um, I would then do a, you know, we were talking about this yesterday, uh, you do a m copy event to library, and I would move it over to edit demo, and I would keep it. Um, and again, this is all referencing external media, nothing is being brought into the library at this point. It's a, we're doing a lean library, is, right? That's the term? Lean that's, library? That's the term we made up on that's the, the show, okay. yeah. I like it. I was calling it a trim library, and I can't remember wh who it was said lean li library, and I said, ooh, that's a lot of alliteration. Let's use that <laughs> instead. Yep. Um, so. OK, well, this is cool. Let's go back. Let's go sit down. I got Great. some questions for Dragon. Sure thing. So, oh, there's yours. That's the dude I have a beverage. I have a free beverage, <laughs> complimentary. So, um, <laughs> Dragon, what, what did this mean? Um, what did this mean in terms of, um, I have notes here. The component roles, I don't know what that means, Sam, and finishing in logic. The roles? Yeah. Yep. Well, since we uh, named every mic to be per character, so Jay, Victoria, PD, whoever it is, Boom, um, once Brian had been the, each clip being associated to each character, that each, each mic had its own role, so which means now once the edit is done and I want to mix the audio, um, I just export that out to um, X, X2 Pro, which yes. is, uh, which is yep. a program that, third party program that takes right. that XML and can convert that XML into a file that Logic can read now. An AAF file. Yeah. Right. So now all the roles become as different channels in Logic. And now I can control them completely. So, and this is, this is the whole, where are my tracks thing that everybody always talks about. So what logic is, as an editor, you're just pushing stuff around. Mm -hmm. The collision detection is saying, oh, this will go down <laughs> here, so it'll overlap, Thank whatever. God. I love it. But because things are labeled, mm -hmm. you know, PD, 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 Victoria, yep. even though there might be a PD down here for whatever reason because of the uh, collision detection, those things will be strung out into one track in Logic, correct? Yeah, they should show up in their own tracks. So mm -hmm. Jay should have his own track. So, so it, it's PD. almost like, and I'm, and I'm probably saying a whole bunch of stuff wrong, and I'm sorry, but it's almost like there is a, uh, an invisible track, if you will, <laughs> inside Final Cut. Once you put it into a role, because that stuff will string out and get to your track in Logic the way you need the it. Invisible track? Uh, I'm just saying that. Um, in an old school like track based set system, if it's not on this line uh -huh. along here, it's not going to appear in logic, oh, right? I see what you mean. Yep. But in Final Cut, because of the roles, these things can be any place that the software chooses to put it because yeah. of the collision detection. As long as they be belong to the same role, exactly. they'll show up in that track. Right. 
So, and, yeah, I'm making up words as I open my mouth <laughs> no, here. But essentially, that it. stuff ends up on a track in yeah. Logic. Yep. Yeah. So then, uh, how much stuff did you do in Logic, just out of curiosity? What, what, what kind of, what kind of uh, things were you doing for it in Logic? Right now? Uh, are you still so working so on it? We're still editing, so... I mean, we oh, just, come we on, just, guys. Just, I, wanted to, I thought we were going to finish and see it. We just wrapped it. like two weeks we just ago. Wrapped, oh. <laughs> wow. It's all synced. It should be pretty fast. good. <laughs> I'm not that fast. <laughs> okay. But it, um, that stemmed from you having such a nightmare yeah, logic I mean, with the, the idea, project. The idea to get right. this right was because the previous project... Yeah, you um, had a short that was in iTunes, right? Yes. The, yes the, we, and we it did, did really thing. good. It was like number one or something like that. Tell yeah. me about that. Uh, yeah, number one in 17 countries. Oh, there you go. Not bad. What was the short about? I, what, I created a new album, an artist album, and then I had an idea to do a, a short film for it and have the short film be scored by the whole album. So um, Ryan came on board and we put this thing together and, um, and then throughout the whole process, at the end, I realized there was a lot of audio issues in the final cut. There weren't issues, there were just hidden features like the roles. So it's the same came by, saved my life. And, uh, That's a common theme around here. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did. He, did. he, well, did. he, he tours every weekend around the world, and he would be up at 4 in the morning, and I was back in New York at this point, and it'd be 7, and I'd be getting a text, I hate life, I, I hate sound. <laughs> so um, I got in touch with Sam through uh, the guys from Red, and he came by. He looked at the whole thing and he said, yep, I know what's wrong with it. Cool. So a couple of clicks here and there, we assigned all the roles, and magically all the sound appeared in Logic now. And because that before was, that, it was a complete mess. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And that was before, that was on the short. That was on, it was a 4K shot short. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, and We're again, we, we, we've already talked about this, planning ahead, mm -hmm. planning ahead makes a huge <laughs> difference. Exactly. You had the experience of, of dealing with the mistake on the short, so you didn't make that mistake. Oh yeah, again. I mean, working on the short was like a big, you know, big study, study case. <laughs> it's like, it's it like was going like, to school. It was, it was film school. Okay. It was film school for the technology and us nerds, you know. We <laughs> basically ironed out all the mistakes and issues, and then when we were ready to shoot the feature, we knew what to do. Great. What else? Well, primary is exporter. I did. I did that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You showed me this the other day. Yeah. But, um, can we show that? I, I can show you how I prepped it. Yeah. I, I don't. We don't have so, primary so, export. So on essentially, here, what you believe. needed to do is you wanted to make a document that had like a thumbnail and some detail about the shots, well, right? He wanted me to create a document that had a oh, thumbnail. It's your fault. No, <laughs> no, actually, no. I think you just got to be excited. But what I wanted. Was, <laughs> He said what, stills. What I wanted was, I wanted, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted screenshots of yeah. every take. Um, it seems reasonable. Yeah. Unless you're the in, editor. In a Dropbox. In a yeah. Dropbox yeah. folder. Yeah. So she wanted a little thumbnail of each shot. Oh, oh screenshot. A JPEG file. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And you want it like in a, in a, in a spreadsheet? Dropbox, in a Dropbox folder. No, just as JPEGs. Just oh, okay. Just JPEG, no spreadsheet. Ryan, Brian went in the next step and he just made a whole document. I went above and beyond. <laughs> But yeah, I want to see this. Yeah, yeah, well, sorry about the it. back and forth, back and forth. But I, this is really cool. Let's we'll just, take a look we'll at how this work. works. It's fine. Um, so now I'm going to show of hands. Anyone use Primaries Exporter? Perfect. Cool. So it's it's really powerful, and um, so there's there's like three main features of it that you can uh, that you can purchase if you so choose. Um, but we ended up using the stills function and the um, and the spreadsheet, it creates like a nice spreadsheet for us. And that's, those were the two functions we used. We didn't do video export, um, but I would do. So you're making a, a, a new freshy project. I am. Okay. And I'll do based on first video clip, great. Um, and then you're gonna select a bunch of clips. Grab all my video and put it on the timeline. So letter E, yep. boom, that's done. So Those that's a on. thing. Um, and so from here, the, the key with primaries exporter is, for stills at least, it will export, um, you can set it so it'll export any, anytime you set a marker. So if you have a long clip with lots of like tracking shots and whatnot, or you know, and you're moving around and you want different stills from a single clip, you can create multiple markers on a single clip. However, for my workflow, I was mostly just trying to give you know a reference to them of what we shot and what we hadn't. So I would go through and I would just, 
I'd bracket off any clip. I'd find a frame I like. So you, what you're using is you're using like the top and tail. Yep. So you're scrubbing forward, then you're hitting a option left bracket, and that would top off exactly. the head of the clip, leaving the tail. You're not worried about that yet because you're going to use a different trick. Mm -hmm. So let's assume now you've gone okay. through the whole reel. So I've got the whole reel, and I've selected stills. Every single first frame is a frame that I think adequately represents. You see what I'm shot. saying there? So by putting the cursor in a place and using the top command, which is option left bracket, it takes everything from that frame forward same and as, kills it. That. And then the, the magnetic timeline squeezes it all down together. Mm -hmm. Then... From there I do, of course, select, select all. all. Um, I do control D so I can set duration. I set everything to one frame and I zap it all down to a single frame 6K. Uh, like I can, you know, you can play back <laughs> the like, the, the power shot through all of this footage. Right. Um, but that was, that made sure that I was able to export really quickly. That was really the end goal I was going for. Um, it's just, how do I get this export out so my computer isn't spending all day exporting a, a bunch of 6K? Okay. And just trying to. You know what might be? Yep. Wait. It's not running off of that. You know what it, you know what it is? Hmm. I think we're still running off the USB 3 drive. It's uh, attached. I, I just had it attached for documents. I, I made sure we were running off this guy for, okay. I mean, here, um, let's double check. Yeah, Promise Pegasus. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and how'd you do that? Oh, sure. Uh, so the library. anytime you select the library, this is where you can see um, your, your media locations, your backup locations. Um, Oops. There you go. Scroll to the corner. Yep. Um, and then you can also do your consolidate function. I'm sure you guys know about this. But consolidate is how you manage your proxy media. I mean, that's, that's kind of like an, a really awesome feature that came in 10.1.2 uh, that allows us to kind of keep tabs on our media. And we're doing all of this. How do I zoom Command out? Command option and eight. Command option eight. Oh, Boom. Sweet. Um, demo just, just in case you guys are curious, now I you're did. A demo zooming God. Command option eight. There you go. Um, so I created FCPX created folders right, you know, in an actual folder. Where'd you come up with that name? I know I'm, I'm stealing stuff from your podcast. That's awesome. Um, Just pumping up my ego. So I yeah. love it. So, <laughs> uh, so I've got, of course, the Suburban Cowboy edit folder, and then I actually have my library inside of that, and I have an FCPX created folder where I keep my proxy media, and if in this instance the original media is in there as well, but. On, on the shoot, I had original media in a different like folder structure with all my cards. I just kept it there. Um, and so that's where my proxy media, that's where I consolidate my media to. So I have all of this available um, for playback. And I'm glad I don't need to reference the proxy today. So now from here, you can, you can export a frame of each, of the, each yes. one of these frames. So from at this point, once you get primaries exporter, there's kind of like a setup, a small setup process, but it's essentially you just add it as a destination um, in share. And I have a little like a primaries exporter. I think I did like 720p, a little in the corner nugget to export. And anytime I click that, it opens primaries exporter, and you can choose. You can choose any of the three options: it could be video, stills, or the spreadsheet. Um, and Yes, I got excited. I liked the spreadsheet. I thought it was cool, but it actually, I think, was Show me one of the was spreadsheets. Useful. Yeah. Please. I'll allow My it. mother would say, please. <laughs> Why are you so demanding? So this is actually from day 15. This is some driving footage that they did. Um, and I don't know if I need to zoom it. Um, but it's, you no, know, no, it's... You're good. It's, you're good. Okay. Um, so it's just... It's simple as that. I mean, I was able to create that really quickly, doing the select all, make him a frame. So Dragon actually just wanted a folder full of JPEGs, and you gave him this instead. Yeah, well, then he has, then he has <laughs> clip name. He has all, you know, scene take. I just wanted this. Yeah, yep. yeah I, I got know. it. And he did all that. But what was cool is I also did, I, I, used, this, <laughs> I used the stills feature as well. So that I also I sent him. I use the camera report. I reference this all the time. OK. In the edit. Um, See? Good job, man. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll come around so, here. Dragon, Logic versus Pro Tools, uh, w w what are the advantages one way or the other? Uh, don't know. I don't really use Pro Tools. So. Uh, have, had you ever? I've seen it. OK. <laughs> so it, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even on the table for you? I just don't think it looks logical. Logic looks logical. OK. Yeah. I mean, what I mean by that is I look at it, and I get it. Right. Pro Tools. Um, I guess if, if you've been using it for a long time, it makes sense to you. You've learned all the functions. Right. For me, Logic, when I first got it, version 8, I looked at it, and prior to that, I was in Cubase and Nuendo. So when I looked at Logic, 
everything just made sense. It was just logical, so. Okay. It was almost like they made it, and then as they went to version nine and 10 now, um, they made it simpler and more simpler, which I love. Because like, why would I have to sit you, there and figure out how to do something where it's, when I can just do it and figure it out very easily, so. Right. Do you, you say they made it simpler. Do you feel like you're, you still have all the functionality and power that you need? Oh, it yeah. just feels simpler. I, I have more functionality and power because now I can do things quicker. Okay. So. I think we both run into a lot of people that say, oh, you, you gotta use Pro Tools. And it's like, why? Because <clears throat> it's more expensive? Well, <laughs> well, no, there are people out there. Do you feel there, like you're more of a professional? <laughs> there are exactly. people out there that are, they use. It's ridiculous. There are people out there that use Fruity Loops, which I don't know if you heard of Fruity Loops. Uh, um, it sounds familiar. Sounds like a cereal, right? But it's well, actually a it music, actually is a cereal. It's a yeah. music making program. And okay. I mean, they make music. Uh, it gets released on top forty charts. They make a lot of money, and and who's to say what's better? Right. It's whatever works for you, I think. You know, and Logic works for me, and um, so I'm happy. So something I thought was kind of cool is he went from he knew Logic, Logic Ten, and then he learned Final Cut because he was familiar with Logic's interface. And I'm, I'm currently going through the opposites. I'm learning Logic as a Final Cut 10 user, but it's amazing how these interfaces are actually really similar. They're designed similarly, yeah. and there's, there's a certain like uniformity to this you know, Logic and Final Cut and Motion and all that stuff that actually, if you haven't learned Logic, if you know Final Cut, you actually can learn it pretty easily. And I think that's cool. And I yeah. think that he did the opposite, but. How did the how did the spreadsheet help you creatively as you're as you, or how is it helping you creatively as you're putting the story together? The spreadsheet, the spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, the camera um, report. Well, I mean, I guess you can go through and look at some of the takes, and then I, to be honest, I don't really use it. I haven't I, used I it. Have, you, you I have. I have used it, but um, he's I, been on tour. So <laughs> um, I've been a little busy. <laughs> but so yeah. I, I use it. It's just a quick reference uh, for, for me. I haven't printed out, and it's just easy for me to reference really quickly. Um, I do look through every single, I've looked through every tape that we've done. Well, and you guys also, they're going, have you shot the stuff in New York yet? No. No. Okay. Next week. Um, they're going to New York to shoot some pickup shots, some external driving shots for this, and one of the things they requested was, hey, can you put every driving shot we did on a sheet so we can, in New York, have a piece of paper? Or, uh, yes, that was, that was cool. And yeah. so that's actually, they haven't done that yet, but that's something where it's like, great, we well, have a reference of every driving shot. One of the things that I am being told as a, a new feature in 10.2 is now when you are in a library, even though you have, like in your you know, you have an event, you, you have a jillion events. Right. But when you're in a library, when you go to search, that search is across all events. So you'll be able to say driving and even, and it'll be able to search across all those events. That's so it'll be much easier to put together a list of all the driving shots. That would be, that's awesome. Thank you, Apple. <laughs> little, again, little tiny Sorry. things that they may not be like, Wow, bullet point, look at this, 10.2, now you can. But these are little tiny things that make huge differences in the way that we interact with the media that we're dealing with all the time. Can we take a few questions? Yeah. Any yeah. questions? Sure. Yes. Ultimate distribution hopes will be theatrical release? Um, the hope is that as many people as possible see it in, <laughs> any, in any form, shape, it doesn't really matter. Well, uh, what that really pertains to really now is, is in your domain, Dragon, is yeah. mixed down. Are you going to go five one? Or yes, down? we'll definitely do a five down at least. The uh, short actually went theatrical before it went on iTunes. So we created DC 5.1, DCP. Yeah, so we'll definitely, we'll, we'll go from the top. You know, we'll create the highest possible master. It will be a 4K master, um, highest possible sound, and then you'll end up on your little phone. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. hey, I have the big phone though. Yeah, yeah. Even on the other big phone. phone. So, are you planning on doing your final mix in Logic yourself, or are you going to send it out to? What the plan is that I will I will do my mix in Logic, and then I will go to a 5.1 facility or a person, and then mix it with them in a 5.1 setup, because okay. I don't have a 5.1 setup myself. What's your plan if they say we? Do Oh, that's fine. I will give them stems, but the mix comes from me, and it's in Logic, because I, you know, I want to have dialogue to sound the way it sounds, and I want the folly to sound how it sounds. I want the music to, because I'm doing all the scoring too, so I, I know how it 
to me and to us how we like it, how it should sound. And all I need is someone to, is to bring it into the 5.1 world. Um, what does Patrick work out of? Yeah. I mean, is he at Pro Tools or? He's Pro Tools. Oh, okay. right. So we actually did for the short go yeah. logic the, to Pro Tools for the yeah. 5.1. Todd, you had a question? Yeah, just two quick ones. One, one is, uh, I think Chris had asked earlier, and I don't know if you can answer, just kind of like, what, what did you kind of do with the sound from a soundscape point of view? What, what kind of direction did you go with the soundscape, or what did you do with the sound? And then that, the second part, just for anyone that wants to answer, is this, uh, what the problems? I mean, as much as all the amazing stuff that I had did work, what didn't work? And so, if you guys. Um, First of all, we're still editing, so we haven't started mixing yet. Um, so I kind of even on the short, that you learned from the short, that maybe you're gonna bring into this project. Um, on the short, well, we had lots of problems because, but we fixed it in this film. <laughs> so uh, that was the problem, not knowing after editing what to do with the audio because Logic wasn't reading the, the XMLs and it was treating the audio files and putting them all over the place. So then Sam came in and helped out, put the roles where they should be. And then everything showed up nicely. From then on, it was peaches. So then the second question is, did you learn, mm -hmm. did you learn anything doing this film that will help you on the next one? I think, I think everything worked. On for this. the sound specifically? Everything. I mean, I think was, there's there was ways for us to tweak it to speed up the process even more. Like, what I would love to do on the next one is have, like, Brian mark in and out based on the action and cuts. Um, cool for every single clip. So we don't have to watch the, so oh, wait, you know, the lead up. You know, makeup, hang on, and camera's still rolling, <laughs> stuff like that. Ah. So all that stuff. So we can just be quicker in the Tiny, edit. Tiny yeah, yeah. things like that. Like, uh, it adds I, up, I think doesn't it? For, for us, everything worked. I mean, That's so a far, week of my life right there. Um, <laughs> no, but it's good, the tweaks. Like, are there any more? It's like, we're talking like, we're talking minor tweaks, like, no, but that was a whole week. You just said you, you would it was a week of my life yeah, right there, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And he could have, you could have done that on set, yeah. Um, just mark the in and outs based on. Yeah, well, we we were running off of those USB drives. And Action. Because of that, because of the bus, I, I was limited in how much I could be doing in Final Cut. Well, I was also doing backups. But um, you know, in the future we can do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, as long as we're Thunderbolt drives. Yeah. I was gonna say uh, the issues I encountered is at first we were doing three backups on set, which meant by the end of the day I was like. I well, was you so can talk down. about the first day when we had the uh, bottleneck. Exactly. Um, yeah, um, so we were. They gave me uh, G Speed. I mean, it's a really nice drive, but it's USB 3. And I'm working on a new Mac Pro. And fun fact, I didn't know this, you got one bus for USB on your Mac Pro. So um, this means that if you're doing a backup, and it's not exactly, it's one, you know, one terabyte of media is moving. Uh, I know, I know, I broke your heart. I know. It, 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 I'm sorry. It, was rough. Um, it ultimately meant that by having Final Cut open, by working with the media, um, it seemed that Final Cut was prioritizing, so it was playing back smoothly. I wasn't having issues there, but my transfers would go from 20 minutes to three hours. And um, we actually so ran a test before that, or Dragon ran a test, and it was nine minutes per car. Exactly. And exactly so he was nine. like, it should be nine minutes. And I'm like, it was nine minutes per. I don't know why. If yeah, you're doing one at a time. Yeah. One at a time, it's nine minutes per 128 gigabyte Mac. Right. So and, 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 that, and I came to him and I said, well, that's just not right. Well, because he came out and we were in the middle. We were like an hour left in the day. He's like, I have three hours left on this. And we were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we have to be out of this location in like 10 minutes. But you never want to tell him because it's like, I've been doing my job all day, but it's just going slow. But yeah. we figured that out. Yeah. We, yeah, and we, we moved we it down to two backups on set, one backup off site. And then on top of that, when I'm doing a transfer, I make sure I'm not actively working in Final Cut. So I get like a little 10-minute downtime, yeah. and then I get back to organizing and shot notes and that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I would take the, the big drive home, mm -hmm. and then to my, my studio, studio, and I would make a big uh, copy on the Pegasus. So essentially, we had three backups every day. Right. Additionally, um, and, then, and then when we finished, the problem that we encountered was the amount of data. When you shoot 6K, it's 16 terabytes, one terabyte a day. So we ended up going, well, we cannot edit now. The Pegasus is full, so there's no room to edit. So we had to get a, a 48 terabyte. So that was the only problem, just space. And I learned something with shot notes. If you have an extra comma at the end of something without a keyword, it won't actually give you the option to save an XML. And that was something where I, I almost panicked at first because I had a <laughs> spreadsheet, I put them together, and it wouldn't let me save. Uh, wow. But uh, I, got, I got some developer support. And they were like, hey, there's an extra comma in the <laughs> shell, and it's causing this to not work. So just know. One last question. <clears throat> One last question right here. You're, um, uh, you, uh, you're a color worker. What happened with your thing last film? You shot ready to go. Resolve, or how did you manage coloring? Coloring? Yeah, yeah I went to resolve. Headache. Yeah, headache? Yeah. You won't do it again for this one? 
Uh, no, I think it's better now. It's much better now. The, the workflow back and forth is much better. Do you want to tell them specifically? What? Yeah, what happened? Well, uh, one of the things was when, um, when you sync the audio clips, uh, I guess, you know, Final Cut makes some compound clips. And then when you go, when you do edit and you send it to DaVinci, DaVinci says, where are the clips? Because it's looking for the clips, but the clips are already in compound clips. So it wasn't seeing the video. Um, so then what happened was I had to uh, basically sync the audio manually, line by line, every piece of audio. Uh, so I These are the 4 a.m. texts I was getting. Yeah. <laughs> I hate life. This is when I wanted to kill myself. I hate Da Vinci. I hate. <laughs> I hate life. <laughs> no, it was fine. We we got through it. But um, that was one of the big biggest things. Um, a lot back then we was on Da Vinci Ten, I believe, and. And it wasn't that long ago. It was a year. It yeah, was it was a year, year ago, ago. and uh, they're already at twelve now. Obviously. The one thing that you always know in this business is things will change. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly, and there were some things that just wasn't transferring back to DaVinci, like resizing clips and, you know, speed changes and all kinds of stuff that you think is beautiful in Final Cut, and then you go to DaVinci and it's not there. Yeah. And then you have to either recreate it or you have to export a clip from Final Cut, render it, so it may, just bake it in, and then bring it to DaVinci. So, and we had some VFX stuff as well coming in, so it was, the, the whole DaVinci Final Cut wasn't, wasn't uh, gelling. But now it's much better. Good. Guys, Brian, Dragon, Ryan, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for sharing your yeah, workflow. Welcome. Thank you. Give me a hand. Thank you.